In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about my endoscopy, which is a slightly invasive procedure where a specialist takes a, a tube, for lack of better words, with a camera on it, puts it down my mouth, through my throat, and takes pictures of my uh, airway, my esophagus, my upper abdomen, all throughout my abdomen folds, abdominal folds, and my stomach, and into my intestines a little bit, just to try to see if we can figure out why I've had this burning feeling in my stomach right here that slightly radiates around my navel and then comes back up to my upper abdomen and lower sternum area. They weren't able to let me film the actual procedure, but they were kind enough to allow me to film the doctor breaking down the results. So I'm going to share a little bit about what it was like to get the endoscopy. We're going to share the results of my endoscopy for any of my viewers who happen to be curious. Uh, that will be in this video as well. And then my final thoughts, okay? Welcome to the video. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So first things first, uh, I scheduled this appointment like six, seven weeks ago. The um, gastroenterologist was pretty backed up. And as of a few days ago, because this just happened, uh, they were able to finally see me. I went in for my consult and she's like, yes, you qualify for an endoscopy. You've had this burning feeling for this long. She asked me a ton of questions. I filled out some paperwork and we figured out I was good to go. We did talk a little bit about lifestyle. Um, of course, anything that can and, and possibly would agitate the stomach or create any of these symptoms, this, this rash-like feeling, right? This burning feeling, acid reflux, whatever. They want to identify it in your lifestyle. So they're asking you about smoking, about drinking, about drug use, about lifestyle in general. I, don't, I wish I would say lifestyle more. The biggest thing I had to cop to was the fact that I'm I'm struggling with drinking. We talked about that and she obviously brought up that being a huge, huge factor. That along with smoking, a uh, huge factor for for stomach injury and, and damage to the gut lining and all that. So we spoke of the importance of um, of continuing this process of, of getting sober for me and, and how that will be just, it'll lend itself well to uh, not only the healing of my stomach, of course, but to the safety of my internal organs and many other faculties, mentally, emotionally, and physically. It was really nice to talk to a doctor who was very familiar with addiction. One of her patients just passed away a few days ago, uh, stage four liver cirrhosis, 47 years old, couldn't stop drinking, so. No pun intended, but it was a sobering story and um, I, I need to hear those right now because I am fighting tooth and nail to get sober. And she asked me what supplements I was taking, what I had tried to get better. I told her cabbage juice and all these su supplements and blah, blah, blah. She's like, okay, let's go ahead and scope you. Someone canceled that same day. So I went back that evening. Luckily I fast, right? So I hadn't eaten anything that day, but she wanted to make sure that as long as I hadn't eaten since the night before, you can jump in their spot at 4 p.m. You can get that procedure rather than wait a couple more weeks. Uh, and I had to cut off my liquids at noon so no liquids for me which for me was just water and then we had that appointment i came in they took me back they asked me a few questions sort of double checked on a few things wanted to know if i had any conditions or anything that i knew of that could possibly create a complication for this simple but uh still relatively serious procedure in that they did have to put me under i'm going to butcher this name but they gave me a medication called propanol propofol some newer anesthesia med that puts you out but brings you back much quicker. Uh, that they hadn't quite done that yet. First, they put me in an IV, and um, and then I sort of spoke with the video or my phone for a moment, touching base with you guys. Just here at the GI doctor's office, uh, about to get my IV, about to go get my endoscopy. We'll check in afterwards, guys. Wish me luck. And then they rolled me back into this room. And before I knew it, it was so, happened so fast, they explained they're gonna put something in my mouth to keep my mouth open, and they're gonna have me lay on my side. And then the nurse anesthetist, I think I said that right, uh, go ahead and plunge something into my, my hand, like where I had the IV, and I immediately started feeling a little bit loopy. I remember they were playing Jagged Edge, and I started laughing about that. And then they said, okay, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and do this. We'll see you guys, or they see, we'll see you after it's done. And I was just yelling at them like, I can't believe you're playing jacket ash. <laughs> and I just, I cashed out. Next thing I know, I'm in that little recovery area. I'm like, what just happened? It's so incredibly fast. Just woke up from my endoscopy. That shit hit fast. I mean, they rolled me back in the room. I'm still in the room. <clears throat> We're in my little recovery area and they get you in there, they give you something that gets you feeling a little bit loopy. Which felt awesome. And then they flip me over on my side and they were playing Jagged Edge and I remember them playing Jagged Edge and now I'm just here and I'm definitely feeling out of it and a little, a little bit buzzed. So we're gonna film 
the, re the doctor said we could film the results. Had me sit up, I was a little dizzy, a little dazed. My equilibrium was a little off. It felt like, like a little unsteady, like I might fall, but only for a moment. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut to the results uh, that you're gonna see right now where I actually got to meet with the doctor who was kind enough to let us film. Uh, the first couple of pictures are just your small intestine. The first section of the small bowel called your duodenum, or some people refer to it as the duodenum. Mm -hmm. um, and this all looked normal. Um, then this part here is that lower part of the stomach, here and here. Mm -hmm. And you see, I just kind of marked it as what erythematous, that means red. Um, and so that's the part that looked just a bit, just a little more um, irritated mm -hmm. than what I would normally expect. But again, still fairly mild. Mm -hmm. um, this right here is my scope, but I have the scope curved back on itself, so it's a big J loop. And so I'm looking back up at the top of the stomach here, I see. normal. And these are the stomach folds, which all look normal in the middle stomach part. Stomach folds? Yeah, your stomach has folds. They're called gastric folds. Okay. Uh, Rugae, and all of these look normal. Sometimes they can get really big and juicy. Sometimes they can flatten out, and that can be indicative of different processes. For and is this normal. perhaps where you may see like a, an ulcer in the stomach? Yeah, or down here, or commonly down, down there. Oh, I you see a lot of them down low. Um, but yes, we can see it in any part of the stomach. I see. We can also see it in any part of the small intestine. Too. That, that's called um, a peptic peptical ulcer. Peptical ulcer, yep. And these three? So this is the lower part of your esophagus. You can see a transition between this color of mucosa mm -hmm. and the pinker kind of. That is what we call the Z line, which is the um, gastroesophageal junction, meaning the area where the esophagus mm -hmm. connects with the stomach. It looks okay. And it looked normal. Nice, good, um, smooth line around there, which is normal. And then these are just two other pictures as I go up, as I'm pulling the scope back in the esophagus that all looked normal. Wonderful. Yeah. That's valuable. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, your upper endoscopy today actually looked better than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. um, I saw no ulcer in there. Really? <sighs> no. Um, I did see some redness at the bottom part of your stomach. Mm -hmm. That can be nonspecific, um, but can also be an indication of prior irritation or inflammation. So what I would wonder is you clearly had some big insult that occurred, you know, in early like July, right. right? And so I don't think it is unreasonable to assume that if, during this process that you did have a lot more inflammation than I'm going to see now. And that you had mentioned to me that for six weeks you've been on Prilosec, mm -hmm. and that on the Prilosec, um, you think maybe getting a little bit better, mm -hmm. just maybe hard to say. So that makes me think that that started the healing process, but that you're still going through that. And what can happen after a big insult or a lot of in inflammation or irritation is you can be hypersensitive for a while. So the lining can be just definitely more um, sensitive to anything that upsets it. So um, any irritant. What I would tell you to do, I did biopsy because I still want to make sure that you don't have H. pylori. Mm -hmm. So H. pylori is a, it's called Helicobacter pylori and it's a very common bacteria. We see it, we used to see it most commonly in um, uh, third world countries. Um, but um, over the years we're seeing it frequently here. Um, it's so common now that we test pretty much everybody that comes in with um, upper abdominal pain for it and it's actually in our guidelines as a first step. I did take the biopsies if in fact it does come back that you did have some or you do have that um, bacteria then I would want to treat it with medication. I see. That would also explain why the medicine that you're on the Prilosec has not completely made your symptoms go away. On a scale of one of the worst things you've seen to where I was, where would I fall in that line? One or two. Really mild, yeah? Really mild. That's wild that I've experienced so much pain. I mean, my, my mom who's filming can tell you I can be coaching and just feel the burning and she'll see me guard my stomach without even realizing I'm doing it as I'm pointing people around and cueing things. you mentioned, yeah. right. Wow. Again, whether it's just some, you know, persistent hypersensitivity that we're still dealing with, mm -hmm. um, it's a possibility. What I would say is, let's give you um, a good one to two weeks on twice a day dosing of the therapy. Okay. Let's get the results of the biopsies. They mm -hmm. should be back in about five to seven days. Okay. Um, make sure that you don't have the infection, because if you do, we would want to treat it. Sure. And then go from there. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, big shout out to my doctor for letting us film that. She didn't have to do that, and she did. And, and so, yeah, strange. I mean, I'm so thankful, right? I'm so thankful I do not have any ulcers. I have very minor inflammation in the lower part of my stomach, as, as Doc said. 
I still have, even right now this morning, there's just a little Bernie feeling right there. So I don't exactly know what that means. We kind of brought up pancreas or gallstones, but she said it just didn't fit the profile. So she brought up the fact that there can be some residual sensitivity, as I believe she said in this video, because I haven't watched it back in a minute, but residual sensitivity after an acute injury. She talked about how perhaps if I had had a scope much sooner, right? This whole thing happened in early July. We would have seen more inflammation. It would have been more obvious, but I'm so thankful, clean bill of health. I feel like I slightly have a new lease on life. Uh, the only thing we have to do is double up on the omeprazole, uh, which is fine, until we get the results of the biopsy that they did take of my stomach and find out if there's mace pylori. A very interesting thing I learned is that because I was, I think I was on omeprazole, an acid blocker, when I had a stool sample to check for a, bac a bacteria known as H. pylori, which tends to be associated with ulcers, it could have been a false negative because that stool sample came back back in July saying, I don't have that bacteria. I can drink coffee again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, I struggled to give up the booze, but I gave up coffee. I've only had coffee a handful of times in the last couple months. So it's really nice to be able to have warm coffee again. And that's my video, guys. That's my experience with an endoscopy. As, as far as being like an anxious person, an anxious type of person getting this procedure, it wasn't so bad. I did some square breathing in the back. I had a good support system. It was quick, and luckily that med, like I said, it wore off really fast. Side note, for anyone who struggles with drinking, I was jonesing for a drink when I woke up from that sedation. Like it almost felt like I'd had a drink or two, and luckily I put some things in place to keep me safe in this early recovery, early sobriety process, but I but definitely woke up being like, whoa, I feel like I'm slightly buzzed and I want more. But that, that be my addict brain. So appreciate you guys. Look forward to always hearing from you in the comments below. And if you happen to still be here, know that uh, I, the content has been very heavy handed towards sobriety and recovery and just my, my recent struggles in my stomach. And I know that's not why a lot of you come here. I understand a lot of you come here for other things and I'm trying to be mindful of that. And as soon as I can get back to that sort of content, I will. This will not be a perma recovery, perma sobriety, perma update, that stuff only channel. It's just where I've been at right now and it's important for me to be able to share that. So I appreciate you guys doing that or accepting that the best you can and, and being so supportive and sharing your stories with me. And if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and put in the comments in all caps circle. Circle in all caps uh, lets me know you made it this far, which is badass, and I'll give you daps for that. And also, uh, I'll, you know, circle like we're, we're together. Isn't that just adorable?